Season of the Wish is here, and with it comes a brand new dungeon, Warlord's Ruin. So today, we're bringing you a guide on how to complete this dungeon, things to look out for, and what builds and weapons work best for each encounter. Remember, if you find this video helpful, and you like seeing build videos and other Destiny 2 helpful content, leave a like on the video and consider hitting the subscribe button. With that being said, let's jump right on into it. Alright, first things first, you're going to need to go to the tower. Visit Ikora and she'll give you a quest. This will give you access to the dungeon. Once you have that, open up EDZ on the map and go ahead and launch Warlord's Ruin. Once you're actually inside the dungeon, it's already going to start off with a traversal section. And throughout the entire dungeon, these traversal sections are a bit of a maze. So if you think you hit a dead end, try looping back a bit and you'll probably find a new path. For the first part, if you make it to this room here, then you've gone too far. Turn around, head up this cliff and start traversing along the side of the mountain. You'll shortly come across a chest, but it's actually a booby trap chest. When you go to open it up, a bunch of screebs will spawn and you basically are forced to not be able to move. This is a common thing among this dungeon. So keep a lookout for these chests. They do have a glowing effect to them if they are booby trapped. Otherwise, it's a normal chest. There's also a little fun trap for you right here once you get past this bridge and before your first boss. So be sure to interact with it to find out what happens. All right, now that you reach this point, you're actually at the first boss. And the first boss has some pretty simple mechanics. They will be used in similar ways later on, so keep that in mind. Once you start the encounter, a few waves of adds will spawn, but eventually the boss will spawn a taking construct near him. And if you notice, it'll actually have a ring around it. But before you can do anything, you and your teammates will be teleported into three cages in the Serena. Back mid, top left, and top right. For each of you to get out, you need to shoot the taken or blighted eyes around your cage. There'll be three that spawn around each cage, so look around everywhere. They usually go from low to high, with one on each level, low, medium, and high. You can shoot them for your teammate if you finish yours. Once all three eyes have been shot, your cage will open up and you can freely jump back down. Now that you've been freed, it's time to activate the Taken Construct. Roam back over to where the boss placed it down and stand in it. After a bit of time has passed, the Taken Ball in the middle will disappear and turn white and give a little pulse. This means that you fully activated the Construct. Sometimes there will be more than one Construct that spawns, so you'll want to try to activate as many as possible. This will give you extra time for your damage phase. Once one of these Constructs have been activated, you'll get a new buff on the left side of your screen saying Imminent Wish and a countdown timer next to it. Once this reaches zero, you'll be given a new buff, Neem's Wish Empowerment, that also has another timer. This buff will actually be the buff that lets you deal damage to the boss, so make sure to be ready for it once your wish imminent timer is almost done counting down. Once the damage phase is done, just rinse and repeat. Shoot the taken eyes to escape, stand in the construct, and deal damage. It's as simple as that. During the damage phase, the boss doesn't move around a ton, so any close range DPS options are probably going to be best. Things like swords, shotguns, and fusions, and even rockets. Legend of Acrius also is a very good weapon for this boss. Any supers that can deal a ton of damage in a short time are also very good. Golden Gun, Blade Barrage, Banner Titan, and Pyro Gale are just naming a few. Pretty much any one and done super. Do as many damage rotations as you need, and once you beat this boss, you'll get a glimpse at the final boss before you're quickly teleported into a jail cell in a dungeon. Yes, this is Inception. You're in a dungeon, in a dungeon. To escape the jail, there'll be six gears. You want to have them all spinning in the correct direction, and then you activate the lever. From each cell, you should be able to see at least two of these gears. You shoot them to turn on, shoot them again to turn off, and then shoot them once more to switch the direction that they were rotating. In two cells, there will be a skeleton with tally marks next to it. Look for which hand is next to tally marks. That'll tell you how many gears need to be spinning in that direction. So if the skeleton's left hand has four tally marks next to it, you'll need four gears spinning in counterclockwise direction and two spinning in clockwise since there will be six. So the skeleton's right hand means clockwise and the left hand means counterclockwise. Once you have all the gears spinning in the right direction, activate the lever and grab your loot. This next section is another traversal section with a ton of traps. So be on the lookout for spikes in a hole in the ground and vents on the walls that will send out spikes. You'll also stumble upon these doors that say dispel one, two, or three. You can ignore them for now. Once you fully beat the dungeon, you'll get a quest that will take you through dispelling these doors. I'll keep the route playing in the background sped up so you can see exactly where you need to go if you do get lost. Do be careful, once you get to the mountainside, there are sections that will break from under your feet and they kind of just look like a snow pile. Once you reach this bridge, Kill the enemies and stay to the left along the outside of this castle. There's a pipe that you can jump up and continue forward. Keep following the path and eventually you'll reach the next boss, the Locus of Wailing. 
Once you start this encounter, you'll have a bunch of adds that spawn. There'll be a bunch of Taken in the middle with a Minotaur. It doesn't seem like this is tied to any specific interactions, but I still like to take it out so it isn't shooting at us. You'll also see a bunch of Taken or Blighted Eyes, like the ones from the first encounter, spawn in the air above the middle of the arena. This seems to be specifically tied to spawning the Scorn Captains. So once your team is ready to start the next phase, take out all the Blighted Eyes. On the back left and right near the edge of the castle, you have a Scorn Captain spawn. It works very similar to the first encounter, except one important note, is that if you leave him alive long enough, he'll throw a Taken Construct. Wait for this to happen, then kill him. And when he dies, he'll drop another Taken Construct. These work exactly the same as the first encounter. If you're able to get him to throw one on both sides, you'll be able to spawn four Constructs, which will give you four orbs, and that's all you need for one run. You can kill the Scorn Captain quickly, but it just means that you'll have to do two prep phases before a damage phase. A little while after the Scorn Captain has spawned, your screen will start to turn a bluish white and you'll see a debuff called Biting Cold stacking on the bottom left of your screen. If this reaches 8 stacks, you'll be forced to walk, and if it reaches 10, you'll die. To remove the debuff, you'll see flags with torches around the exterior of the castle. Go stand near one and your debuff will quickly go away. It's also important to note that during this time, you'll want to be activating all the Taken Constructs available by standing in them like you did in the first encounter. You can stand in them for a bit and then run and cleanse yourself and then go back to finish it off. It does seem like they're activated by total time spent in the ring, so if you spend about 5-10 to 10 seconds in the ring, you can go cleanse yourself and then come back to finish it off if you weren't able to finish it. Once all the Constructs have been activated, after a little while, you'll notice the bottom left saying Howling Winds Die, letting you know the storm has subsided, and in the very center where the rally flag was, you'll notice Orb Spawn. This is directly correlated to how many Taken Constructs you activated. Meaning if you activated all four, you'll have everything you need to start a damage phase. Near where the boss is standing, there are four pillars in a U shape. Once you grab an orb, take it to one of these pillars, interact with it, and dunk the light into it. This will light up the brazier and make a safe spot for you. It is important to know that the orb only has 15 seconds and then it will despawn. Our team like to keep one of the further pillars either back left or back right as the last pillar to interact with. Because once you dunk that last orb, damage phase will start on that pillar. Once the damage phase has started, the storm will come back, and you'll have to keep rotating pillars until you've used up all four pillars that you activated. Only rotate to the next pillar once yours has died out. It seems to either be on a timer from when the first person steps in, or when the ogre actually slams and potentially snuffs out the flame. Not 100% sure on what actually stops it, but stay in there and do as much damage as you can until you move on to the next pillar. After using the last pillar, you successfully completed a full cycle, which is kill the minotaur, kill all the blighted eyes, wait for the scorn captain to show up, throw a construct, and then kill him. Activate the constructs while making sure not to let the storm kill you. Then take the orbs from the middle and activate the pillars and do a damage rotation. Since this is a big ogre, he likes to move around and come close to you, but you do have to stay in the ring to do damage. So we found fusions and rockets to be the best options. Use your rockets as he's further away, and then when he gets closer, switch to a controlled burst fusion to deal massive damage. Range super seem to be the best option since usually by the time he gets over to your pillar, you'll basically almost be out of time with that pillar. Do enough damage phases to finish off this boss and collect your loot. After that, you'll come up on another traversal section. In this section, there are two secret chests. So when you get to this room with a bunch of chests, don't just go running through. One will actually have loot in it and not be glowing. All the other ones will be glowing and spawn Screeb, so choose the one that's not glowing. That's the one that isn't booby-trapped. If you keep moving up the mountain until you reach this doorway, cut across the mountain on the right and grab the second secret chest. After that, head back down a bit and follow the path in the wall until you reach that Taken Blight. Keep following the path until you reach the top of the tower, jump down to the bridge, and place your rally flag and get ready to start the final encounter. This encounter works very differently from most that we've seen before. Usually there's one setup phase, and then you deal as much damage as possible, and then you repeat that cycle. This one seems to be more of three mini setups, each with their own mini damage phase, and then one final damage rotation before repeating it all, all over again. Each of the first three phases before the final damage rotation works the same. There's a bunch of enemies that spawn, including two witches, and I always try to kill those witches first. Around the boss, you'll see six total taken or blighted eyes, three on the left and three on the right. And same as the second encounter, once you take out all six eyes, two scorn captains will spawn, and they work the exact same way as they did in the second encounter. If left live long enough, they will throw a construct, and then when they're killed, they'll drop another. These constructs will be directly correlated to how much time you have to damage the boss. Importantly though, a little while after the scorn captain spawns, you'll be given a debuff that will kill you when the timer runs out. And then you'll also see three scorn enemies with torches spawn. You want to play tag or hot potato with them. When you melee one of these torch enemies, you'll transfer your debuff to them. And when they hit you back, they'll transfer it back to you. Do keep in mind that if a teammate has already transferred one of their debuffs to the, one of these enemies, you can't melee the same enemy that already has a debuff, since they already have one. An easy way to do this is to sit in the constructs and activate all of them, and then when there's roughly 2-3 to three seconds left, melee a torch scorn right after they hit you, 
That way you're guaranteed time to escape. Shortly after the debuff has finished, the Scorn will despawn and two groups of Scions will spawn. And at this point, when these Scions spawn, it's time to start the mini damage phase. If the boss is pushed past the point indicated on the health bar, you'll get to rotate to the next mini damage phase. If not, you're still gonna be on this platform until you do push it past that point. It does seem that if you activate more Taken Constructs, you'll have more time. And I believe that you'll have the full amount of time to do damage, even if you do get past the point on the health bar. If you fail to get past that point, don't worry, you can just repeat it over again until you do. You'll repeat this two more times, some totaling three platforms, moving to a higher up platform each time. After the third time, you'll head up to the final damage phase cycle, and this is the big one. You'll have three plates to deal damage from. Once the boss shows up for each plate, start dealing damage. There will be some blighted eyes that spawn during this phase, and it seems to be as if you let all those eyes spawn around the boss, you'll just have to move on to the next damage phase. So it's good to have one person keep an eye on them, pun intended, and destroying them when you can. After all three plates have been used and become blighted, you'll be teleported back to the very beginning for the first mini damage phase, and start all over with three more mini damage phases and then another big damage phase. As for loadouts, fusions still seem to be very good here. Personally, I'd pair that with either a linear fusion or something like Whisper of the Worm, since snipers did just get a buff. I like to use my fusion for the Scorn Captains and for the mini damage phases. And then for the big damage phase with the three plates, I like to use my super, so something like Hammer of Soul, Blade Barrage, Golden Gun, or Gathering Storm are all fantastic. And you'll mainly want to do a ranged one since the boss will be a little bit further away. And then I'll use my heavy ammo as well in these damage phases. Once you've done enough rotations to finally push the boss to the final stand point, marked by the health bar, you'll be teleported to the top of the tower to finish him off. Importantly though, this doesn't seem to have a white mechanic. Or if it does, it's a very long timer. So keep shooting the boss until it's dead. The eyes at this point don't seem to do anything except add more incoming fire. So you can shoot them to stay healthy, otherwise don't really worry about them. And there you have it, you successfully completed a run of Warlord's Ruin. Be sure to claim the final chest, and you should be given a quest with it. There are a pile of bones that you can collect very close to the last chest as well. And if you found this video helpful, please consider hitting that subscribe button and liking the video. Leave a comment down below of what you think of this new dungeon, and if you're a fan, will you be chasing after any god rolls or that exotic? That's it from me, peace out.